Um, hi everybody, um, my name is Karen Panter. I am Extension Horticulture Specialist here at UW and I also have a research component to my job and teaching, um, but half of it is Extension. And uh, anyway, some of the stuff that we're doing here, I hope some of you are interested in. Um, we have some greenhouse stuff that we're going to be showing you here in a moment. And I'd like to introduce Andrea Garfinkel. This is Andrea. Andrea is working on her master's degree with me and she's actually going to do the first portion of this little demonstration and actually you all, some of you will actually get to help her do, collect some of her data on her sunflowers. Um, but she's got some of her sunflowers in the greenhouse right behind you and we'll, we'll run in there in a minute. And then we also have the two high tunnels here and she's also doing some work in these. And what we have in the high tunnels are some of her sunflowers as well as some of the brown and gold flowers that you see blooming in there, which we are going to actually dry uh, for a banquet in February. Um, if we have time today, I can show you how to harvest and prepare those flowers for drying. I'm not sure if we'll have time though. Um, the other thing that we have in here is some uh, different varieties of tomatoes. And you may say there's tomatoes in there because they're all very small. Uh, but yes, we've got about eight or nine different varieties of tomatoes. And some of you can actually harvest some of the tomatoes and do some of the data collection um, for that as well. And this will show you exactly what we do on an almost daily basis out here. Some of the information that's important and how we actually take the data. Um, so I'll let Andrea go ahead and show you uh, what's in the greenhouse and we'll actually bring the plants back outside because the greenhouse isn't very big and then you can, uh, she will show you and some of you can actually take some of the data and write the numbers down and this will give you some hands-on experience in what we do routinely here. So. Andrew? Well, thank you. Uh, as Karen said, my name is Andrea Garfinkel. I'm a master's student here in the plant sciences department. Um, before we go in there, I'll do a little bit of talking. It's pretty loud in the greenhouse, so it'll be easier to hear me out here. Um, essentially, what I'm doing is kind of what that we were talking about earlier, and that is practical, uh, applicable research to people here in Wyoming. I'm doing a cut flower feasibility trial. Essentially, I'm growing three different varieties of cut flowers and seeing whether or not they grow well here in the high plains. And the purpose of my project is to then distribute the research to potential growers within the state and within the high plains. So um, with that, if you guys want to follow me into the greenhouse, you can kind of see my production method. Uh, I'm growing for a total of 12 months and uh, my sunflowers are on a two week rotation. So what you'll see in there is a total of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five different weeks, I or five different sowings. So the oldest are two weeks older than the next, which are two weeks older than the next and so on and so forth. So um, there are some in bloom in there and we'll bring them back out and harvest. Sound good? So anyway, what we're doing with these, these are from Idaho and they're supposed to be cold tolerant tomatoes. And um, so we're just measuring um, the number of fruit we get off of each one, and then we're also weighing each, each particular tomato. So what we would do in the case of, let's say, eh, those aren't quite ready over there. There's some over here that are quite ready. So if somebody wanted to look at the tag on there and see what variety it is. Kootenai, okay. Yeah, go ahead and pluck a couple of those um, that are ready to pick there. What and then I'll show you. These are sunflowers. These are Andrea's sunflowers. Really? The corollary to the ones that are in the greenhouse. Yeah. Yeah. Were those yeah. cross-pollinated already? No, they don't. They're, these are self, tomatoes are self-pollinated. No, I meant the sunflowers. I'm sorry. I'm interested in the sunflowers. Oh, they're, they're hybrids. They, they. So those are the hybrids to, to be able to eventually. They're, process. they're, well, we don't do any of that. They're, we just buy the hybrid seeds and then one seed equals one flower. Okay. And that's it. We don't worry about, we, don't, we didn't even want them to be pollinated because we want the flowers to last longer. So. One last question before you leave. What is that variety right there? The pink? The pink, that's a straw flower. It's a tall mixed is the, the variety name. Um, and we'll, we'll use those for drying. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I can show you how we prepare those too. But here, well, let's go outside and I can show you. I love this. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, the data that we actually take on these. And 
And the way we do this is each variety um, is listed on the data sheet across the top. And it's very important when we're working with stuff like anything like Andrea's things or anything that we want to keep particular track of. We're, we're keeping track of how many tomatoes actually are produced in each of the two tunnels because they act differently. So this one is the east-west tunnel, which is that one, which we don't want it right now. We want the other data sheet. And this, this has, you have marked if it's the fertilizer or compost? Or yeah, the the only thing we did was fertilize with a little uh, slow release when we planted them in June, and that's it. <laughs> that's all they've had. And then we just write the date down. So today is the 30th. So someone want to write 8.30, right there, on this, right under oh, my right. fingernail, yep. Okay, and then what we do is, this is just a scale that measures in grams, and we do everything in metrics in the scientific world okay. here, and we want it to be at zero there. So we just weigh each tomato, and these are the kootenai, mm -hmm. which is this, mm -hmm. and this particular one weighs 40 grams. Okay. So you'd write 40 grams right in, yeah. So that we do that for every single tomato <laughs> that we harvest in here. And what that will tell us at the end of the season is how, much how many tomatoes were produced on each plant in each of these two high tunnels. And that's information that other high tunnel growers will be able to use. It's information that people who maybe want to look at these varieties might be able to use. Um, it's just real practical stuff. And so, and I'm also going to save some of the seeds for next year because I'd like to try these varieties again. So I'm going to save some of the fruit. And since tomatoes are self-pollinated, you don't have to worry about anything. You know, the, the seeds that are in there are going to be that same exact plant next year. So, um, so that's one thing we do out here. Um, Andrea, did you get the, where'd she go? Okay. Uh, did you want to show them how the data works on the tall sunflowers? Yeah, I can okay. do that. I'll stand close so you can. <laughs> I'll speak loudly. So all of these sunflowers are evaluated for two things. First of all, they're evaluated from the days from sowing to harvest, which means how long does it take from the time I put the seed into the ground to the time I have a flower. Um, and then the second piece of data that I always take is the stem length. And the stem length is determined from the level of the soil. So I clip the flower right at the base right at the base here I don't know if you all can see and then I measure it from the bottom all the way to the bottom of this is called the receptacle so I mean it's very simple they're very tall I was just explaining to someone that at different times of the year they're different heights because they like different day length. So even though they will bloom at any time of the year, these particular varieties get really tall during the summer. They prefer to be, these are called short day plants, which means that they bloom faster under short day length. So this is 122 centimeters. Um, now, have leaves been taken off the stem? Yes, they have. In fact, um, I have I have had, as in any greenhouse, there are there are always disease issues, and so we're having some powdery mildew problems. But the lower foliage has been removed for that reason. What variety? Um, One. That's Death. Uh, Which blue. is blue. blue? She has everything color coded. <laughs> I have to ask her how things are organized. <laughs> Which is good. So this is a this is what my data sheet looks like. Y'all can come see it a little bit early later. It's very simple. Uh, I have recorded which sowing date this is, which, which day the sunflower was sowed, which day it should be harvested, which should have actually been like two days ago. Um, I was saving them for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the stem length and whether or not it's, a sa it's of saleable quality, which is a uh, qualitative assessment, uh, qualitative, qualitative visual assessment of the plant. Um, simply is the stem straight, is the flower, does the flower look right? Um, those sorts of things. Is it tall enough? Is this? Is the? Um, is it too spindly that it falls over? Those sorts of things. Those the, those are parameters that are very important in the cut flower industry, uh, which I've been involved with now for 
I hate to tell you how long. Um, but I started out growing carnations and roses as a cut flower grower down in Colorado. And so it's, I'm just now being able to get back into it. And so that's, that's where this all comes from. Um, but we'd like to see a cut flower industry start to prosper here in Wyoming. So that's what we're trying to do here. And the stem length is huge with cut flowers. That's probably the most important thing, as well as the flower size and uniformity. So. And Does that extend the life? Yes, oh, absolutely, yeah. Yep. I was going to also mention that although those are the only two data parameters that I'm taking on this particular sunflower, uh, a couple times during the year I'm also doing cert seed germination trials, I'm doing base life studies, and I'm taking data on the width of the stem, the dia stem diameter, the diameter of the flower, and the diameter of the receptacle. <laughs> what do you do with that information? Uh, I'll compile it and make uh, the end result is to make a grower's guide so to allow to distribute to potential growers within the state so they know what to expect so I'm making all the mistakes and they don't have to. <laughs> How many seeds do you start with in a, in a set? Did you say you do every two weeks? Mm -hmm. Yeah so 16? Yeah each 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 sowing has 16 plants of each variety. What is your percentage of success with the seeds? Uh, well, I sow about 24 at a time. I think maybe that's what you were asking yeah. me. And usually I get probably upwards of 90% germination, which is pretty standard for the seed industry. I mean, you're really not going to buy anything that's anything less than that. In horticultural practices, uh, seed germination is typically up to about 90 to 95 to 99%. Anything less than that is usually not acceptable. So. Uh, the sunflowers, the, the question was, what's the length of time? The sunflowers take anywhere from 60 to upwards of 110 days, depending on a couple of things, depending on the cultivar and depending on the time of year. So what's the quality of this one? I would say yes, this yeah. is saleable. Would you guys buy this oh, yeah, sunflower? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Cut the stem off. Yeah. Usually 24 inches is pretty yeah. standard. Yeah. So. Yeah. so sunflowers must prefer fairly cool weather because it was kind of cool like that. Yeah, the greenhouse is not good. Yeah. Wait, you should have been there at about <laughs> 2 o'clock this afternoon. It gets really warm. If the place, if there's, if the sun is out and uh, it's a warm day in July, it'll be 100, over 100 degrees in there without, without the cooling. But it's cool, so, yeah. Question there. Do you ever have problems with getting, with some, with some getting hooked? Yeah. I've had, I've, I've had, like, little boxes that I've put peppers in and they'll actually get hooked. Yeah, that's a very <laughs> applicable question, actually. He asked if they ever get too hot. And uh, I just finished uh, a harvest in the high tunnels a couple weeks ago. And we think that we were seeing some leaf curling and some disfigurement, and we think that's what was occurring, actually. We think they were getting too hot. Yeah, it was really interesting. It was right, Karen noticed, right at the level of where, It's where, right about here yeah. and above that. Yeah. So we think above where you have a lot of air circulation. So, yeah, they it was definitely just... <laughs> get too hot, and they don't like it.